From 1938 to 2008, the old Alec Box Stadium stood proudly on the campus of Louisiana State University. Generations have gathered at the box to witness some of college baseball's finest players. The old Alec Box Stadium was home to champions and tradition, but it was built on the memory of a hero. When the stadium first opened, it was originally named the LSU Varsity Baseball Field. On May 20th, 1942, the LSU Board of Supervisors dedicated the stadium for Simeon Alec Box, an LSU letterman who was killed in North Africa during World War II. However, before Alec Box gave his life for his country, he gave his heart to Earl Hubert. Whenever his name is, they say something about ball at the box, I always think, of, do people really know what, who Alex Box was? No. He was a happy, smart, well-educated, well-rounded young man. And, and anybody who knew him loved him. And he was not tall. In fact, I was taller than I am now because I was shrunken so. But he and I were just kind of almost head to head because I was 5'6 and he was about 5'9. He finished LSU in, a, in petroleum engineering and it's a five-year course, but he finished it in four years. Simeon Alec Box was born in Quitman, Mississippi on August 5, 1920. He attended George S. Gardner High School in nearby Laurel, where he earned a reputation as an outstanding athlete. In 1938, he signed with LSU to play college football and baseball. Girls that roomed, one particular girl room next door to me, and she was from Laurel, Mississippi, just like Alec was, and they went to high school together. And her daddy, was he was influ influential in getting El Alex Box and Bill Hogan and a couple of other boys from Laurel to sign up at LSU. Because Alec had been offered a contract with the Cincinnati Reds, but he decided that he would rather have an education than go to play professional ball at his age, which he did. But we were at the top of the Capitol, and Mr. Mr. Box and Alex were there, and Betty and I walked up, and of course we were introduced. And that night, he called me for a date, and and not when he, and we we went on several dates. But then after that, I don't know what happened. Earl and Alec were only apart for a short time. It wouldn't take long for their paths to cross again. It was it was. He, I think it was Holy Cross, and he got hurt, and that's when he threw his shoulder out. And then after that, he didn't go. He he had to. He worked his way through to pay back his tuition and everything. But 1942, that spring, before he graduated, he played in the field at LSU. And I, the only game that I went to at LSU. And the only class I ever skipped the whole four years was to go watch him play ball. And didn't he throw his shoulder out at that ball game? He didn't play football anymore, but he worked at the training table. He waited on tables there for all the rest of his school time. And then during the season, the, the sporting seasons, he refereed football games and I guess basketball games. And he, he had a lot of things that he had to do on campus. Now what, I don't know. But then that, and he had, he had another girlfriend. I mean, that was, I'm, I'm, I don't, and her, I don't even know what her, where she is now. She may be dead as far as I, I know. But anyway, he dated her for a year or so. And then that, after, that Sunday afternoon, he came in the lunchroom or the cafeteria, whatever you want to call it, and I was having supper. And he said, we sat down, he sat down, we talked to you. He said, you want to go to a movie? I said, yeah, that's fine. So we went to a movie, and then after that, we started to date. There was no big, hot relationship, I can tell you that, fast, because that, that was all there was to it. I mean, we'd go to the movies, and then he'd take me back to the dorm, and that was it. I never missed, when I, well, I used to go to the LSU operas, even when I was in high school. My mother used to take a bunch of us kids up there to LSU. The spring opera was on, and I said, do you want to go? I, I said, because I'm going. And he said, yeah, I'd like to go. And walking across the campus to go back to the dorm, he said, hmm, I didn't know they did all of those wonderful things at this music school. 
You see, he was way over in an engineer and he didn't know what was going on on this side of the campus. But that was one of his remarks. In 1942, LSU's yearbook, The Gumbo, read, from the dark jungles of Java to the wastes of North Africa, sons of Louisiana State University are battling the elements and the enemy in a struggle from which many of them may never return. There are many among us now who inevitably will be with them soon. It is to those who will give their lives, to those who will die a living death on the field of battle, to those who will never get a chance to see these pages, that this volume is respectfully dedicated. Best time in a full uniform was when he got his bars, when he had his military graduation. And I had bought the, the, what, the silver bars for first lieutenant? Of lieutenant, I think it's silver bars. Well, I bought the bars for him, and his parents came, and uh, they spent the night before, and then they, the whole day, and we took them to lunch and this and that and the other. But the, when we were putting pinning the bars on his shoulder, he said, "Hurry up, hurry up! I have to get my kiss." I said, "You just wait till I get these bars on your shoulder, and then I'll kiss you." He graduated in June, in July. He, well, at the end of June, he came to see me. The f first part of July, he was shipped to f Camp Blanding in Florida, and he wasn't there more than, oh, I'm going to say a month. And the next th thing I knew, he was at Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania, and that was a port of embarkation. They shipped him to Scotland, and they were training all of these men to go to North Africa. And that's, what, that's when he went to North Africa to, to fight Rommel's Africa Corps. Lieutenant Box, a tank commander, was posted to the 1st Infantry Division, called the Big Red One in North Africa. I used to write practically every night, I guess, after, you know, it wasn't anything squishy or mushy. It was just a letter that, you know, a friendly letter, that's it. But, uh, and that's the way his letters were. I mean, he would tell me what, but he couldn't say much because everything he wrote was censored. It was during the war and upstairs on, on, in Evangeline Hall, there was a fifth story like a sun, like it wasn't a sun room, but it was like on a, a rooftop room. It was all enclosed. And the, the house mother would get, tell us, that, ask us if we'd like to go roll bandages for the Red Cross to send. And we knitted all kind of stuff and all that thing. But anyway, that particular night, it was a Friday night, and my roommate said, come on, let's go upstairs and roll bandages. I said, no, I don't, I don't think so. I don't want to go. So she said, uh, well, I guess she left because I sat at my desk and I was writing him a letter. And as I wrote the letter, this funny, funny feeling came over me. And that was the Lord telling me he was gone. And then on the 2nd of March, that afternoon when I got back from class, I had a telephone call from his daddy. And he said, Earl, I have bad news for you. He said, we just got word that Alex has been killed. On February 19th, 1943, during a fierce battle in Tunisia, Alec Box's tank was shredded by a German landmine. He was 22. Brigadier General Theodore Roosevelt wrote a letter of condolence to Box's mother, Maddie, saying, the deeds and death of your son have gone to make up the spiritual background that is this country. A man from Plaquemine, who was within the same engineering outfit as Alec, he came home after, came from the war, and he came to my house. And he told me, he said, Earl, I just want to tell you that he went just like that. He did not suffer one second. But before that, in November, he threw a grenade, and as, as Bud Montet, if you ever get that article that Bud Montet wrote in his column, he said Elliot couldn't hit the side of a wall with a baseball, but he threw a grenade and knocked out a whole tank full of German soldiers, blew it up. For his valor and service, Alec Box was honored with six medals of honor and the Distinguished Service Cross. My first thought was, Go call you. Go tell your mama, because my mother and I were very, very close. And I went. We didn't have phones, and we didn't have, couldn't talk out. We could have campus phones. But I went to the telephone to the booth and uh, took my money and called my mama and told her. And she said, "Well, sister," she said, uh, "You know," she said, "The Lord knows what He's doing," and she said, "And you have to 
accept it, and that was it. After Alec Box's death, the LSU student body sought to commemorate his sacrifice in some tangible way. The Reveille observed, For the first time in the school's history, the service and memory of the military hero came to be esteemed so highly that a structure on the campus was named in his honor. The first I heard of it was the night I graduated from LSU, and Toddie Moore, who was Bernie Moore's daughter, she was a, a class below me, she came running up to me as we were ready to march into the stadium, and she said, oh, Earl, they're going to name the stadium for Alex. And that's the first I knew of it. But I, I really, I mean, I, Alex was my first love. I, I don't mind telling anybody that. And I'm sure had he come back, because he had written me a letter that he said, I understand they're passing out rings this Christmas, and if I were there, I'd be passing them out too. Earl eventually married and moved on, but she never forgot her first love. Alec Box was laid to rest in North Africa. He never saw home again. His older brother, Sam Box, had a memorial placed in the Laurel Cemetery. However, his memory and his name lived proudly in a stadium that bared his name. Now the old box has been retired to the pages of history, and a new stadium has taken its place. It too has been dedicated to Alec Box, and it too will do his name proud.